The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the May 27th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to us at just past 8 o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening in at the normal time frame, we'll make the show as pertinent as we can. We'll be recording today's show between 8 and 9. We'll be recording Tuesday's show. We're going to be off on Monday for the holiday. We'll also be recording that from 8 to 9 and then on Friday as well next week from 8 to 9. So a little bit of a scheduling shift there. But uh, nonetheless, let's go ahead and uh, get uh, started on this uh fantastic Friday. Now, I would love to hear from you. And you give us a call at 877 if you're listening live, 877-927-6648. As well, if you are listening live but don't want to call in, you can always send me an email. Steve at TFNN.com is where you'd send it to in the subject heading. If you'd be kind enough to put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den, uh, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, I've got all U.S. indices, U.S. equity futures, I should say, trading to the upside. The Dow just slightly up by four points. The Nasdaq, 60 points. S&P, nine. Uh, Russell is up five points. If we take a look at what transpired overseas last night in Asia and Australia, their markets finished higher. Hang Seng up nearly 3%. And in the S&P uh, 200 in Australia, that was up a little over 1%. You're up this morning. You've got the DAX trading up seven tenths or 98 points. The FTSE's up a quarter of a percent or about 15 points out there. So kind of a setup like we've had the last couple of Fridays, which basically it means the handoff here is that uh, U.S. equities should continue higher today. Would should should not be surprised to see the U.S. market. Uh, finish higher. We'll take a look at levels where price will be targeting or levels that have taken out would suggest even higher price as well. You've got gold trading up 11 bucks. That's six tenths percent. Two percent for silver, which is 42 pennies. Uh, you've got platinum up eight bucks. Palladium's up uh, 29 bucks. Copper's up two pennies. Lights recruit is trading back nearly a buck, trading out of 113.13. Natural gas, which has a TD9 count top, that's trading lower, uh, in, which is to be expected. It's trading out at 855. 30 year treasure up 19 ticks. She's trading at 142.09. Um, U.S. dollar is uh, off just slightly out there. So, uh, you know, the easy way to just kind of summarize what all that means, or at least what some of this means, is look at my little nine panel market update chart out here. So we begin by taking a look at the ES Mini. What do we know about the ES Mini? Well, first, it's going to target its most recent high, or it should target its most recent high. That's a swing point from the trading session of May the 18th, and that's at 40.95. Now, if price closes above 40.95, odds favor it'll make a run first for 41.20, which is the center of its bear structured weekly profile. That'll be confirmed on Monday, uh, but it looks pretty good right now. Or the top of the daily profile at 41.68 or the top of the weekly profile, which up at the 41.98 level. Now, those areas will be attained so long as the spot volatility index, which right now is trading below its 50-day exponential moving average. I'd write down the figure of 27.54. We closed below it yesterday. We get a second consecutive close today. That suggests that the spot volatility index wants to go target its lower Bollinger Band reading. That would take us into the 21.28 level. And if that's going to unfold, we're going to see the ES Mini make its way up to the top of the weekly profile out there, which is in the 41.98 level. I'm not saying by when. I'm just saying that those would be the conditions. Now, if we take a look at the NQ out here, the NQ's target is going to be the center of its bearish structured daily profile. 
And that level is 12.622. And 12.622 really gets us back to the prior swing point for May the 18th. That high was 12.594. So that's really your range, 12.594, 12.622. Now, if price can close above 12.622, it's going to suggest a move to 12.995. U.S. dollar index today should, I won't know till the close, but it may form a TD9 count bottom. Now, that says today's low or it could be the low early next week that would form the bottom and we've seen the u.s dollar now price is trading below right now the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile but nonetheless you've got a td9 count pattern uh that's going to again likely to form by today now that also it doesn't mean necessarily but the euro has a potential for a td9 count top today i know the yen had a td9 count bottom a couple of days ago and i believe that the great british pound also has got a td9 count top so a lot going on from a potential change in trend signal in the uh, currency area. With regard to Goldilocks, gold is running into resistance. And there's really the, the resist, it's trading up a bit, uh, 9, 10, 11 bucks, trading out at 18.58. But it's trading right into a resistance zone. I'm not saying that it can't take it out. I am saying that it's trading into a resistance zone. And that's between descending trend lines, but more so the uh, top and center of its bearish structure daily profile. And that's between 1861 and 1872. If price can close above 1872, we likely will see a run up to the 1937-ish area. But there is a descending trend line below that. But one step at a time, and that first step is price has got to close above 1872. If we take a look at silver out here, silver is uh, overcoming its the center of its bear structured weekly profile, that suggests that it's going to go target the top of the weekly, top of the daily. That's between 2276 and 2288. If price can take out 2288, that would be a very bullish signal for Goldilocks. In the case of Light Sweet Crude, uh, she's targeting the 116.43 level. That's its prior swing point high. Natural gas, so you take a look at it, nine, TD9 count top that uh, confirmed. It also confirmed a Roge momentum indicator top out there. Now, Prices below its oscillator and change line. You can't see that here on my charts, but I know that that is the case. And so the first target to the downside could be the top of its daily profile. And that's currently priced at 763. So no new profiles there. In the case of the 30 year Treasury, we can see that it's trading between trend line resistance, which is where it's trading into right now, and trend line support. It's got a really narrow cone of silence out there. So um, don't know that we're going to get a whole lot of activity out of the 30 year Treasury today. So overall, that's what's going on inside of the markets. Let's go take a look at some details and go a little bit underneath the covers out here. And to do that, let's go ahead and start with the NQ. By starting with the NQ, we've got our multi time frame set of charts out here. And the uh, daily time frame just shows us, well, first, there is a uh, completed. Actually, you know what I should do is do this. Give me a moment here. Yeah, so let me do this. I'm just going to just so that you have the bigger picture. Then we can get back to the uh, intraday charts out here, the daily time frame. So I just want to make and this way. I'm giving you kind of an overview for the four equity future contract. So if you take a look at the ES mini, the ES mini actually formed a Gartley buy pattern two weeks ago. It was a bullish hammer candle. I know it's hard to see when we use these bar charts out here, um, but it is a bullish reversal candle from the weekly standpoint. Well, actually, no, I can't do that. Um, so you've got a confirmed Gartley buy pattern. That really should take price up to the 4198 level. That's the top of that uh, bearish structured weekly profile. The NQ has a three drive to a bottom pattern. That has been confirmed out here. That says price could run all the way up to the 13868 level. New profile on a weekly basis attempting to form for the Dow Equity Future contract as well. It has a bull sash candle as we speak right now. So it too could be confirming a buy the D point pattern. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits 
This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, we've got uh, U.S. equity futures uh, trading higher, pointing higher. The Dow only up by six points. The Nasdaq's up 46 right now, and the S&P ES Mini's up uh, seven points. Before we go take a look at the details on the NQ, we do have a question that's come in. So I want to get to uh, that. Again, you can, uh, if you're listening in between 8 and 9, go ahead and send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Put the radio show question in that subject heading, if you will, uh, just as Doug did here. So thanks so much, uh, Doug. And Doug uh, says he wants to take a look at Costco. Uh, COST is the uh, ticker symbol out there. He says, I'm long Costco. Would like your opinion on getting out now on this uh, bounce, or should I wait for additional signals? What's a good stop uh, loss price target out there? Okay, so as we take a look at Costco, let's do this here. Give me a moment. Just because I can visually show you. We'll switch back and forth between screens. I'm going to go to this little three-panel screen out here. And we're going to take a look at the uh, daily time frame chart out here. So the daily time frame chart here for Costco, Doug, shows a A to B equals CD to the downside. And that was completed. When I say it's completed, it was completed because we generated a, a bullish reversal candle on the trading day of May 23rd. That was your bull sash candle. What also transpired on the very following day was a bullish structured profile. And yesterday, price closed above that. Now, you're trading into, and as you know, and I think the reason why you're writing, and you're trading into a resistance zone, which was established by this gap to the downside. Since price is already above the uh, top of the gap, meaning the high of May 18th, that high was 463.86. Price should at least be able to fix and repair that window, that gap to the downside, that broken window. And that low is at 480.23. So that says, uh, you know, you might want to stay here. But if you're, you're asking about a stop, this is how I would uh, trade this at this stage here because you got the valid bottom. I would take yesterday's close, which is 464.99. I would take a look at the 10-day uh, average true range, which is $19.47. And I would make my stop 1947 times either 1.272 or 1.618. The reason is because you don't want to have your stop within $19 because that could just be average normal daily movement. And you don't want to get knocked out by that when you have a bottoming pattern that is out here, confirmed bottoming signal. 
So that would be my recommendation. Uh, but if you're more conservative, then uh, you know, once you just know that once you get inside the, once you get into a stop that is less than nineteen dollars and forty seven cents, you got to say to yourself, "Oh, then make it really tight," because now what you're doing is you're really jeopardizing. You know, if you put it nineteen forty seven as an example, that would be a bad idea. That's just the average ten day movement out here. Recognizing it's probably not going to be that large. Part of that being that big, huge gap to the downside that we're taking a look at on May the 18th. So that's what these charts show us. But let's go take a look at the multi-panel set of charts that I've got out here from my uh, Ninja Trader. It's got uh, most of my tools out here. The monthly basis, what we have in uh, Costco was what? Really just price pulling back to support. The support level would have been getting down to 395.10. So far this month, it's gotten down to 406.51. So close enough out here. Prices back above the center of that bullish structured profile. So that's a positive. If you take a look at the weekly chart, you had a TD9 count top, uh, that uh, and that turned into a Rhodes Mentum indicator top, and price pulled back to its second breakout level at 448.50. Now there's no bottoming pattern that I have here. The bottoming pattern came in on the daily time frame that you and I just looked at. Now price is also above that red oscillator and change line. So again, all of this suggests higher price. Now higher price to where? Well, the next higher price level that I can see out here comes from the weekly chart. And that would be at the 521.40 level, the bottom of that profile. So that is a, that's a price target. Now, the 195-minute chart, as we came into the close yesterday, formed bar number eight of a TD9 count pattern. So you might get, you might be getting a, at least on that time frame, which is the only time frame where I see a valid top signal. Now, the 15-minute has a valid top signal as well. So you may get some type of pullback retracement. I want you to prepare for that or anticipate that, Doug. That may just be normal and natural, and price just simply could be pulling back. It could pull all the way back to 432, um, which I, it wouldn't be pleasant, I'm sure, with it at 464 now. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. It could at this stage here, but I really need to see the open and the first 195-minute uh, session before I can really comment fully on the 195-minute time frame chart. The 15-minute chart, a different story. You can easily see a pull price pulling back to 458.70. In fact, I'm curious, where is price trading in the pre-market out here? Let me go take a look here. Uh, 456.70. Okay, so that was the 15-minute bottom of its profile out there. So if that's the case, gonna, and it may gap down, then your next area of support is uh, 451 to 453. That's coming from the 30-minute time frame out there. So I hope that helped you. I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for, Doug. Thanks for taking the time to write in and have a, a fantastic Friday and a, a great holiday uh, weekend. So now let's go shift back and take a look at uh, the equity future contracts. Let's do some of the play-by-play -play there. And again, we're taking a look at the NQ. Now, in the case of the NQ, actually, let me do this first here, just to, again, just to kind of give you a feel for where it is at. And where it is at is yesterday, it generated a bullish crossover from a market press standpoint. Now, what I mean by that is we now, at least as of this morning, we have 208 instruments inside the S&P. Oh, I'm looking at the, I, went, I meant to do the NQ, sorry. Uh, I mean, I, we'll, we'll come back and do the S&P, but I, I was really talking about the NQ out there, so my apology. But we're going to show its chart. It has the same pattern out here, which was a, a bullish crossover yesterday. And here what that means is that we have 40 instruments trading above the top of their daily profile. That is considered to be bullish. Of course, it doesn't take into consideration a potential topping pattern for those instruments, but just simply trading above a profile is bullish, whereas trading below the bottom of a profile is bearish. You've got 13 instruments there. So we had the bullish crossover yesterday. No idea how long this will last, but as long as it does last, it tells you that you've got bullish conditions for the NASDAQ. Now, that's the daily time frame. The weekly, be curious how the week ends here. Um, it's not as close. You've got 13 trading above profile, 37 trading below profile. If you get a bullish crossover here, that's what's going to assist the NQ with continuing its move higher. Now, when we take a look at the intraday charts, or really the daily time frame chart first. That's on the left. This has a uh, buy the D point pattern. It formed that bull sash candle a couple of days ago. And uh, it had a, another uh, buy the D point pattern back on May the 13th. So it's been doble gi confirmed out there, whatever that means. What that does mean is, again, it's prior, price should go target its most recent swing point high. That's the high for May the 18th out there. And that is at the 12, 594. And right above that is the center of its bearish structure daily profile. So that's your range, 12, 622. You, uh, the uh, 300 minute, the five hour time frame chart, what do we have out here? Did we get to an, Yeah, we did. So you do have, so this is interesting because 
Well, of course, I don't know how the next five hours are going to trade. But you do have a valid TD9 count top. But this says, really, that price should go target the 12, 553.25 level out there. And quite frankly, a close above on a five-hour basis, that would mean 2 p.m. So when this show would normally be ended when it's recorded, uh, a close above... 12, 373.75 tells you about that strong momentum move and 12, 553.25. Now, if price closes above that, here's a five hour chart for the NQ. We have not seen, just so just so you understand that this is not, this would not be the time to sell into this market, even though we're going into a holiday weekend. Why is that? Well, at least with regard to the signals coming from the five hour chart, we would have for the first time price closing above the TD9 count breakdown area. And that would be a bullish signal. So, what you're watching for, whether it's 827 in the morning or it's 127 in the afternoon, the question is, is the NQ trade above 12, 55325? And does it close above that level? And if it does, that then suggests to run up to the 1340275 area. That's the message from the five hour chart for the NQ. We can see we've got a couple of intraday topping signals out here. We come back to this break, we'll take a look at the support points. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we had a, a question coming in the uh, from the den uh, from uh, uh, Dan, and great question. His question is this: What's the lowest NQ close to maintain the bullish thesis out there? 
So the charts that I've got on the screen here right now, we'll go back to those intraday charts momentarily. But here I've got the daily and the weekly time frame charts. So the numbers that I posted in for Dan were 11,576.25 to 11,689. So obviously the number would be the lowest number, which is 11,576.25. How did Stevie arrive at that? Well, We've got the confirmed A to B equals CD pattern of the downside, both on the daily and the weekly. The weekly was a bullish hammer candle. And so it's really the low of that bullish hammer candle. Now, we could get another bullish reversal candle today that could set that um, a bit lower to last week's low. But I don't. You know, I don't know how the week's going to end out here, so I've got to go with what I do know factually. And that is, if you did get a close below that 11,689 level, Dan, then that pattern will have failed, and that would suggest lower price. And the lower price, quite frankly, that would be the target, would be somewhere between 10,468 to 10,763. That is both from the, uh, this is the quarterly time frame chart that we're looking at. And if we go from the 2008 bottom, not 2009, although I think I probably chose 2009 out here. I really should... I don't know about the NQ. So on the NQ, it's it's it seems to be okay. So from the 2009 bottom to the highs, uh, which was November 22nd of last year, uh, that. 0.382 retracement would be the 10.763 area. If we go from the uh, March 2020 bottom to the high from uh, last November, the 0.618 retracement gets us to 10.468. So you'll hear uh, David, uh, our favorite polar bear, talk about confluence. This is, again, where we have the convergence. In this case here, it's a very tight area. Um, and you would expect if price did get down there, Dan, that that would be a potential really good buying area. But right now, what the markets are, and that may be where price is headed to, quite frankly. But in the short-term time frame, meaning today, Tuesday, Wednesday, next week, and maybe even for a couple of weeks out here, we should see a rally. But we need to see uh, prices get taken out, key levels of resistance get taken out. So that would be the downside action out there. Um, 11,576, by the way, was the low of the uh, candle that formed the bull sash candle. Uh, that formed out here um, on the trading day of uh, May 25th. So I take the low of the pattern out there, and that's where the 11,576 uh, level comes into. So that's how I answer that question. But you would see other signals prior to that. And that's what takes us back to those intraday time period charts, where we said, let's go take a look at any kind of support levels on any kind of further pullback here in the NQ, which we may or may not uh, get. Uh, for the uh, day. It's possible that the uh, bottom is uh, is in here. At least that's what the five-minute chart could be suggesting to us. But as we take a look at these charts out here, the 120-minute chart has formed. It did this uh, as we came into the 8 o'clock hour. It formed a nice little bearish dark cloud cover candle. And that confirmed a road momentum indicator top. However, and price is below the top of that profile. But the key level of support that it's testing right now, and if it just holds this level, which was 12, 286 or so, that's very bullish. And if we get a close above the uh, current high of the overnight session, that would be a 12, 373, 75. Dan, what that tells us is price wants to move higher. So that's what I'm watching for there. So it's really the signal for the two hour chart is neutral. With regard to the 30 minute time frame chart, it has a confirmed road momentum indicator top. But price is pulled back to its support level, its bullish structured area, 12,303 to 12,318. So again, if the high of the day gets taken out, it's telling you about the market that wants to move higher out there. The 15-minute chart, its level of support would be down at about the 12,244 area. Should we get a flush for the during the next hour or so to the downside? But there is this possibility that the uh, interest session low uh, has uh, formed and has uh, come in out there so at least that's a, that's what the nq charts are telling us let's go switch over and take a look at the es mini out here in fact we'll go through all of them that way we cover everything for everybody uh, as much as we can so as we take a look at the es mini charts the key level here that we're watching for the day or maybe it's uh, next week is uh, 4095 that's a prior swing point. If price is able to take that out, that should get us to 41.68. If we get above 41.68, it's the top of the weekly profile. The top of the weekly profile that's attempting to conform this week out here for the ES Mini is at the 41.98 area. And that's really where I believe price is likely headed to, 41.98 over the coming week or out here. Maybe it uh, takes a couple of weeks uh, to get up there. But that's my, uh, at this moment in time, that is my price target to the upside. Now, that really won't be confirmed until you get it close above that 4095 level out there. As we look at a five hour time frame chart, uh, we don't have any kind of a, uh, uh, it could form uh, at 2, 2 p.m. It could form a TD9 count top out there. Um, in fact, it's likely to do that at uh, 2 p.m. Um, 
And this would be the bar following bar number nine. 120-minute chart, much like the NQ, a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, but price holding that green oscillator and change line. The 30-minute uh, chart had a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Price is not pulled all the way back to support, which would be between 4047 and 4052 out there. The 15-minute chart, which had a TD9 count, Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Right now, price is trading above its green oscillator and change line. Got 10 minutes to go, but if it closes above 4068, that says it wants price wants to run back to its high. And if it takes those highs out here, that tells us that we are uh, continuing the move higher. So again, the way that the charts are looking, the actual dip for this morning may have already uh, taken place. Let's go take a look at the um, Dow equity future. Oh, I didn't see that. Give me a second out here, folks. Sorry about this. Uh, we do have a call. It's uh, Brent in Martinez, California. Hey, Brent, thanks for calling and, and thanks for holding. I appreciate that. How are you doing this morning at 536 a.m. on the West Coast? I'm doing great, Steve. Good morning to you. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Looking forward to a nice uh, extended weekend out here. Uh, always love these. We only get like about five or six, I think, during the year. Yeah, it should be nice. You guys having some good weather back there? Eh, you know, we're 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 heading into summer, so uh, May is uh, May is unfolding, and that means uh, we get lots of afternoon showers out here. So, uh, but that's fine. It's uh, we need rain. No, no problem with that. So, uh, but uh, it's it's all doable. I always start my day typically with blue skies out there, and that's the beauty of living here in Florida. So, um, I know that people don't want you know to hear me talk about the weather too much, but uh, you're calling about a general market question out there. So, fire away with the question. We'll see what I can do to help. You're starting to touch on it there a bit, just trying to figure out, I'm sure as everybody is, you know, is this going to be something that's going to last a bit longer? I mean, the one thing that I would observe is that it seems like we've had a lot of trouble going beyond a day or two, you know, of any kind of a rally back the other way. It's usually been a one-day move and then it's back the other way, and now we've had... I think this is going to be the fourth or fifth day, at least on the Dow, that, that we've had positive action. So uh, just wondering what your general thoughts are, if you think this is going to last a bit longer. I know that's just a guess, but um, and I know you've given numbers. I guess we just have to look at each one of these levels that if we can get through, then we can you know, potentially go to the next level. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on what you think we that this might last a little bit longer than what we've had, you know, go in the last few weeks here. Sure, sure. So during the break here, we're going to go to a break in about 30 seconds or so. I'll try to pull up some uh, some other charts for us to take a look at. But uh, we've been down, basically, I believe we're now down for eight consecutive weeks, seven or eight consecutive weeks in a row on the uh, NASDAQ, on a weekly basis, that is. And uh, if you go back to the 2000 seven top out there and you take a look at the nq i believe it may have gotten down to nine consecutive weeks to the downside so it, it's gotten extremely oversold and because of the weekly bottoming signals that we've gotten here brent that suggests to me that we should see at least a two-week rally that that would be just a normal knee-jerk reaction but brent we'll come back to answer that question in just a few moments folks so please stay tuned you got dow equity futures up 80 points right now the nasdaq up 106 we'll be right back back with brent and martinez California. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're on the line with Brent in Martinez, California. It's uh, 542 in the morning out there, 842 on the East Coast. And uh, Brent's specific question is, how long do I think that the uh, rally could last out here? And this is the chart uh, that I wanted to show you, Brent. This is uh, just simply the numbers that are out here show consecutive closes above the prior week's close. or um, So whether it's a uh, move to the upside, those are in black, or to the downside. Now, what I want to focus on here are the uh, the rallies to the upside since the November 22nd high out there. And let me get my cursor. And what I want to share with you or show to you is that since that high, we've seen a couple of rallies that have lasted two weeks out here, meaning a close above the prior week's high. And we've seen one rally that lasted three weeks. So the answer to my question, because we have a Gartley buy, we have the a weekly Gartley buy pattern. That was confirmed last week with a, or two weeks ago with the bullish hammer candle. That hammer candle was tested last week and this week. So we know those buyers are really trying to hold this area out here. And uh, this is going to be week number one. So I'd say at least through next week out here for a rally, that would get us to two. So two to three weeks would be the logical knee-jerk reaction rally based upon what we've seen here inside the NQ. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, very much so. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. So, you know, and they, if I take a look at the, I just switch this to the daily time frame out here, you know, we're only last, uh, yesterday was just day two in that rally. So, you know, what I'm expecting here, at least at this stage, is that we could see some type of short term top form, let's say by today's trading session. And then we get a pullback on Tuesday, or maybe we get another rally in through Tuesday and then a uh, pullback on, on Wednesday. But we should see just a bit just based upon normal trading and these parameters out here you can see even on a daily basis the number of uh, the number of days consecutive days where we've had a rally before some kind of pullback the maximum number has been four so yesterday was day number two today likely to become day number three so between today and tuesday should set what we would see would be a short-term top out here does that make sense yeah it does now if i switch uh, screens out here I'm going to switch screens. We're going to go to the black background screen to help, again, answer this question. We're going to take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator out here. And what we're going to see, as soon as I can get to it, Brent, uh, what we're going to see is this is in the extreme overbought territory, which is yesterday closed at 248.57. The last time that we were up at this high, well, I'd have to go back into the uh, time period of about June 5th, 2020. It got a little bit higher. June 5th, 2020, the closing advanced client oscillator reading got up to 326.37. 
So this may move higher today. Market breadth may move this higher today. But this also tells me that we're nearing a point where we should expect or anticipate some type of retracement. Now, with this indicator, we could see price continue to move higher, but the advanced decline information start to move lower and create some type of divergence. Sometimes it works that way. Sometimes it pulls back as the advanced decline oscillator pulls back. I don't know which one. But this, again, adds to the idea, okay, a couple more days rally, then a pullback, and then a further rally that could last through the end of next week or maybe the week after there. Um, and then the, the last piece of that puzzle with regard to the rally continuing, and, and this is all of us, and this is how we would put it all together, is take a look at that spot volatility index. And so long as that spot volatility index remains below its 50-day exponential moving average, that's the bottom left-hand panel, folks. The 50-day is at that blue line. You can't really see it, but if you look to the data box, it shows that 2753. And as long as price remains below 27.53, we closed below the 50-day yesterday. We're trading below it now. And you get two consecutive closes. That's then going to suggest that it should go target about 21.28. So the caveat to the rally continuing, Brent, would be seeing that spot volatility. And even though it doesn't deal with the NQ, it's just dealing with the S&P 500 out there. But as long as price remains below that, then that I say that that's what provides the energy to move prices higher to get this two- to three-week rally out there. That was fantastic, Steve. <laughs> Thank you so much. That uh, pretty much sums it up. That's more of my thinking, and I honestly, at that point, would probably be looking to go short. I just think yes. we still have a lot of issues out there that have to be contended with, and, and uh, would make sense at that point to at least be looking you know, to, to do something like that. No, absolutely. And and the, then the best shorting area, then this would be the ideal, don't know that it'll work out, um, but the best shorting area would be uh, about 41.98. And that is, and I'm assuming that this uh, new weekly profile it's attempting to form inside the ES Mini is going to take hold, and that is the top of its bearish structured profile. If price closes above that for two consecutive weeks, Brent, then we've got something else out here. In fact, what we would have out here, we would have that the signals for all of the U.S. indices out here, or the primary indices, I should say, and this is the cash indices, each have bottoming patterns out here. And it was the NASDAQ 100 that was the last one to give that signal out there. And that was uh, when it formed a bull. And this is the cash indice, not the NQ, when it formed a bullish engulfing candle a couple of days ago. So now what I'm watching here in the cash indices is how do they deal with those prior swing points? Like 32, 654 uh, for the uh, Dow, uh, 40, 90, 72 for the S&P, uh, 12, 564, 10 for the uh, NASDAQ 100. Uh, for the Russell, it, it's 1840.29. For the semiconductor, it's 3071.56. And the New York Stock Exchange already is broken above and closed above the level that we're looking at. In fact, this is setting an A to B equals C to the upside. So the general market, the New York Stock Exchange, is the one that's saying, yeah, we're headed higher. But if the other indices can take out those prior swing points, that's just another indication that we should head higher as well. So that's my overall view of the markets. Great question. I appreciate it very much. Uh, Brent, is there anything else that I can do for you? I think that's it. We'll just take it a day at a time, and I appreciate you providing all the levels that we need to be watching. That makes it uh, an easier Perfect. exercise to, to try to take on. Excellent. Excellent. Hey, Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for waking up so early. Have a fantastic holiday weekend, and we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. All right. Do the same, Steve. Thank you so much. Just have a great day and a great weekend. Will do. Will do. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Uh, John of the Tigers Den asked, uh, what has your VIX indicator signaled? I think I might have answered that question for you, I hope. Um, well, although that was just sent in two minutes ago. But if not, um, and John says, I can envision a scenario where the S&P is bottomed for the year. And absolutely, it is a possibility. It is a possibility with these weekly um, Gartley buy patterns that have formed out there. But, John, I think that the the answer to that question for you and I to to be able to say that that is what's going to happen is when the market proves itself, right, when the laboratory proves itself to us. And that laboratory proof, um, based upon other studies that I have done, would be if we see the Yes Mini close above 41.98, that's the top of that weekly profile. I'm assuming that that is a profile that's going to take hold. We'll know when we're together again Tuesday morning at uh, about 8.06, 8.07, 8.08 a.m. when we record this show uh, live during uh, that time period. If we do see a close above the 41.98 level for two consecutive weeks out there, then, then I say yes. 
then what we've just seen here is a possible scenario where we have seen a significant bottom. Of course, in that case, because we have Gartley buys, we start taking a look at retracement levels as different price targets along the way. And I'm on that screen right now. So and I'll just take the ES Mini and I'll just simply blow up this chart, so to speak, blow it out, so to speak, out here. So here you can see the Gartley buy. And a Gartley pattern, for those of you that are not familiar with what a Gartley pattern is, a Gartley pattern, if you take a look at H.M. Uh, Gartley's book on page 222, you really take a look at his uh, – uh, his his uh, chart that is out there that shows an A to B equals C D to the downside, and uh, and that is in this case here when you have a large move off of a low. Well, that we're taking a look at large move off of 2020. This is a weekly chart out here, and it's very powerful in the E S mini. I haven't had a chance to write in the uh, retracement levels. I'll try to put those in as we speak right now, and uh, 4191 is the point three eight two level out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks, and thanks so much for joining me early. Uh, we're going to record Tuesday's show between 8 and 9, so uh, please uh, wake up uh, early and join us for some tea and crumpets out there. And then again on uh, Friday of next week, we'll also record it between 8 to uh, 9. We've got the uh, chart here for uh, gold up. Now, this shows you how gold is trading right now in all of the major currencies. And, and established bull runs or bear runs out here, you want to see gold trading in the same direction for all major currencies. 
it, it's not just about what gold is doing in terms of U.S. dollars out there. You want to understand what traders that uh, have their local currencies in euros or yen or pounds, and you want to understand hey, if gold is trading higher in dollars, but your local currency is pounds and it's heading lower, as it is right now, um, out there, are you really going to be a buyer? No, I don't think so. So put yourself in the frame set of what our traders around the globe looking at. How is what it is that you're trading, trading in all currencies out there? And if it's moving higher in all currencies, then you know that there's traders around the globe that are celebrating. Right now, you've got gold trading slightly higher in terms of U.S. dollars, slightly higher in terms of euros, a little bit lower in terms of yen, and lower in terms of pounds. So it's not like we've got at least at 8.55 in the morning, it's not like we've got a clear signal that gold wants to uh, rally. And you can see it's trading into its resistance levels, descending trend lines, very left-hand panel chart out there. Let's take uh, the next uh, 30 seconds before we close out the show and go take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract. We had covered for you in detail the ES and the NQ out here. As we take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract, it's trading right now, I believe it's trading above its prior swing point high, which was uh, 32,692. So this is suggesting to you and I that price should go target 32,875, unless we see some other topping signals out here. If I look at the uh, five-hour time frame chart, price is trading above its breakdown level. That is a positive. Here's the five-hour time frame chart for um, the uh, future contract. So that looks bullish as well. If I go down to my short-term time frames out here, Nothing significant to uh, worry about. So uh, it should be rally on. Watch that spot volatilics at day's end. Again, that close below the 50-day exponential moving average suggests that this rally extends itself. But we should see a short-term topic for today and probably Tuesday. So take care, folks. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room.